Hello lovely people, it's Cara here and I am so, so mad. Now, it is a beautiful day today. I'm sitting in my glorious little summer house. The door is open, there's dogs barking, gulls gulling, people living their lives. So I hope you can hear me okay. Um, yeah, just I just wanted to jump on and say hi. Um, believe it or not, I have not done any sewing for a number of weeks. Now you're thinking, oh, wait, what? Hold on. It's been a video a week. It's like endless content. Um, I know, but I batch film when I can, um, and I can release that then to you in sort of hopefully regular installments. But um, I am a normal person, just like you, and just like you, from time to time, I don't want to sew. Um, and for me, you know, that's sometimes about my brain. But also, when the summer comes in England, it is a glorious thing to behold. Um, and I wish, I wish I could do justice to just how lovely my little view is right now. I don't have a very big garden. I don't even have that many plants. I may even try and slice in some footage somewhere here, um, or some pictures or something. Maybe I'll do some pictures, but some pictures here um, of my beautiful garden with my little plants. Um, it's just so glorious. And therefore, um, I just like to spend time in the garden um, and our new little house which has been here just over a year um, or a little bit more than that um, is just so relaxing to be in. So not much sewing. Um, in case you're wondering what I'm wearing, I'm actually wearing a, um, a make that I made a really long time ago, um, very early on in my sewing journey. And it's proof, if you like, that some things do stay in my life. Um, even though I don't wear them very often, I will put a picture of me um, in this. Um, I'll stand up, obviously, because that's what I seem to do in all my videos. Um, but the fit on this is very odd. It's very tight around the busticles. Um, and it's okay, um, but it's not great. I think it's a McCall's pattern. It came free in a magazine a really long time ago. Um, I love the slant pockets. I love the fabric. Um, I thought I'd, I saw it in my wardrobe this morning and I thought I'd put it on and see see how I felt about it and if I'm honest I'm not sure I'll keep it on just isn't the fit isn't exactly brilliant um also I can see all my tan lines and stuff doesn't matter it's fine um it is actually a little bit too tight around here but never mind um I thought I'd put it on and just show you that it isn't just always about new makes and I have so many clothes. I mean, I don't need to tell you that, you know that. I have so many clothes. I literally have dresses that are layered onto hangers and things, it's insane. Um, and that's the other reason I haven't been sewing really. And so I share my thoughts sometimes with the girls at Felicity Fabrics. I, have, I, I intermittently get enormous guilt over the collection of clothes I have. Not really the fabric, but obviously fabric keeps, equals the clothes. I know some people get enormous guilt over their fabric stash. I look at my wonderful me made wardrobe, which I absolutely love, but think I actually don't need anything else in my life. I really don't. I don't, do I? Um, but some people it's cars, some people it's handbags, some people it's shoes. I don't know, some people it's baking. For me, it's sewing. So sound like I'm trying to justify myself. I'm not really, and I don't really want to change anything I do, but I think I'm only human to know that there's the yin and the yang of um, what all that represents in my life. But I love it, you know I love it. So I thought I'd jump on today and say hi, because that's what I absolutely love to do too. Um, I've got a cup of tea here. You can see my Harry Potter in the background there. This is a beautiful Harry Potter version, um, nothing to do with sewing. Um, I can't remember the name of the lady who illustrates this one, but it's the one that's got the three. It's got the three D um, bits and pieces in it. My daughter got. I bought it for my daughter for Christmas. Oh, hang on. It says here, designed and illustrated by Menaliama. Menaliama. It's beautiful. Absolutely stunning. So I'm busy reading that. And that's the other thing, really. I've been using my summer house and just sitting and chilling in the evenings. Um, Tell you what though, it's really warm today. 
not really designed for very warm weather in the UK and it lasts for only such a short amount of time really um, but yeah so I have been doing other things with my life which I'm sure you'll be glad to hear so I thought I'd jump on and just show you where my oh, I've also had a really short haircut um, uh, share, share with you where my thoughts are I think when I last saw you I was making a batch of Rhapsody blouses now actually what I'm going to do is I filmed a bit of footage last weekend um, so I'm going to slice that in here um, because I want to tell you about my Rhapsody story because I think it's important that um, I share with you the highs and lows of sewing so I'm going to slice that in now and I'll see you on the other side Hello, so I'm coming to you from the past as it were and uh, this will be hitting a future video and I thought I'd just slice this segue in of um, just a moment I've had this morning with my trio of Rhapsody blouses. So probably I'm slicing this in at some stage when I show this, this completed blouse. But you know what? Life and sewing don't run smoothly all the time. Um, but in, as is the way of social media, you don't always see the bits that haven't gone so well. So um, my opportunity to change that. So, I, I popped up a picture on Instagram, I'll pop it in here, a trio of um, Rhapsody blouses. Now you've heard me talk about the Rhapsody blouse a lot. Um, it's a really lovely blouse, it's got so many different options, it even has a dress with it as well. And I picked it up a number of weeks ago now, if, maybe even a couple of months ago by the time this comes out, um, on their Friday um, sale, which is $5. Um, and I love I love the shape of it, um, but as is sometimes the way in sewing, I chose to make it out of three different fabrics, clearly the one I'm wearing now, which I'll come on to in a second, a really lovely drapey and quite sheer um, well, of polyester that I made the Wilder blouse out, uh, Wilder, Wilder gown out of recently, and then this black crepe fabric. So there I am, uh, it's quite late, but that's fine, it's not an issue, quite late at night, I'm making three blouses, I'm batch sewing, which I don't often do. Um, I'm not sure I've ever done before, to be honest. Um, batch cutting, yes, I do that. Batch printing out and cutting of patterns, etc. So I made all three up, and I made them all three up to this stage. So you've got the the front and the back, um, and you've got a lovely yoke in here. I've done the burrito method on all three, um, and then I stop and I come back to it the, the following day. And that's what happened to me this morning. So I woke up, I thought, excellent, I'll finish all three of these. And then, <laughs> I don't know, I suppose, and then reality hit, okay? Because I put them on, um, I put, put all three on, and just to check the fit, in case I, you know, because I've made all three the same size, I thought, oh, better just check their fit. And if I come in a bit closer, so I'll, I'll explain, explain my issues with all three. So, here I come coming in as always. So I've made this blouse as you say, see it's complete. Um, now the eagle-eyed among you may re well realise that this bird is not the right way up. This bird is also not the way, right way up. Oh and this bird and this one they are all upside down. Oh. <laughs> the back's lovely. Got the back spot on. Now, it was a remnant of fabric, but obviously I had enough in order to cut the front and the back and the yoke and all that sort of stuff. And when I was putting together last night, I thought, oh, I've put the yoke up the wrong way. That's annoying. Did not think to check that I'd done the other way, uh, the, the rest of the blouses the right way out. So that was this one, and it was in this condition, so just the yokes and things done. Then I've been working with this fabric, and I thought, do you know what? Because in my mind's eye, I made loads of bias binding from this fabric. And I was going to use that fabric for bias binding on this one. But it's that sheer that I thought to myself, that's not going to work. That is just going to look super odd um, to have black bias binding on the inside of this. Um, so I kind of thought, okay, what can I do now? And I've still got an idea as to what I might do. But it basically put me off making the remainder of this because if this isn't a complicated blouse at all. It's um, it's got a lovely bias binding that goes all the way on the inside. You've got um, three different, maybe five different sleeve options, and then it's got a lovely curved hem at the bottom. 
So it's not not complicated, but <laughs> but she says I then came onto this blouse and this fabric, and I know it's black and you can't see it, this fabric is a nightmare. It just creases it creases worse than any linen I've dealt with. And this is just a black sort of viscose drapey number. Thought it was gonna be a good staple in my wardrobe. But I without even moving this, this creases and I hate creased items and I hate ironing. Um, the only time I iron is um, when I'm dressmaking, which I know is a lot, um, but so I decided this creases too much um, and putting the bias binding together for this was going to be a nightmare. And in reality, would I ever wear it because it would be one of those tops that sits in the wardrobe and think, I need to wear it because I haven't worn it, but it needs ironing and I haven't got time. So I dismissed that. I, I then saw this one and thought, for the same reason, I can't make the bias binding. However, um, I have got, because I cut three different sleeve options out, obviously the cap sleeve, I think it's a bishop sleeve and a three quarter with a, um, a cuff, I think is what I've done. So I have got fabric to, uh, could you reutilize the sleeve fabric from this and use that to um, finish the armholes um, and the neck binding on this and then just turn up the hem although a bias binding on a curve always works better so that is a possible save this one this is a Lady McElroy fabric um, that I got from Dragonfly's fabrics a long time ago I made a Melio shirt now I know that the birds are upside down the additional problem with this fabric is it also creases an enormous amount which for such an expensive fabric just I think it's just rude <laughs> that it creases when I've spent so much money on the fabric, which is why I wanted to keep it, to make something else out of it. And But it, it's a beautiful fabric to sew with. It's a cotton lawn, I think, something like that. The other problem I have, which I hope you're going to be able to see, oh, it doesn't look so bad there, but it, it billows out at the back here. So you've got a lovely back pleat up the top here into your yoke. But because it's such a stable fabric, it just... Yeah, you can see a little bit there. It's just weird. It's, it's blurring out. But, as you can see, I persevered and I finished it. It's got a lovely curved hem, which I finished with a, a, a self-made bias binding. I really like the little cap sleeves on here. And I do really like... I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. I really like this, this uh, ruching detail, or gathering detail there. So I persevered. Um... This this bit here was this probably trickiest bit, I suppose, because a V is always, it's not always difficult, but in such a stable cotton with no drape, really, um, this was quite tricky to do because I kept getting a pucker just here. But I managed it in the end, um, so you can see there. Um, and I absolutely adore this. This is such a pretty finish, particularly on me, because I like to have a, a bit of an open neck, as you know. Um, <laughs> So I'm glad I finished it, but I, I wanted to, I don't know, I just thought, it, you know, I share my sewing life with you, and I wanted you to see that, and also on top of that, my brain is working against me 100%, it's literally going, bin it, walk away, it's all remnants, don't worry about it, don't spend the time, do something else, um, etc, etc, but I wanted to see what this looked like, because this is such a pretty neckline. Um, I don't care about the birds being upside down. Um, I don't think you'd even notice really. I've got it on today with my wide leg dawn jeans that are made from Felicity Fabrics. Um, must be two years ago now, wow. Um, and I thought I would just wear it and see. Because you know I've got that beautiful fabric from um, Fabric Godmother, um, which I wanted to sort of trial run something. And I've got to say, I think this top would be amazing in that fabric because it'd be more drapey, the back then wouldn't worry so much because it would sit flatter I think it just is such a lovely neckline and it would sit well under my jackets that I've been making so um, I think it's a real goer um, and I'll keep going up and down but it's a lovely silhouette on me it is actually it is it does feel a little bit tight um, but not uncomfortably so more because I don't really take, make things that are fitted if you like um, but it's a really lovely silhouette over my hips and so on. And I think it would be um, work appropriate as well as, as you can see, casually appropriate here. So I'm really pleased I've made it. 
Um, I think um, some of the other sleeve options will also be really cute. I may well nick the joy blouse and add that onto to this um, instead. Um, and I, I think in a less, as I say, a less fa stable fabric, this neck binding will be easier to do. So I hope you enjoyed my sort of moment of madness, if you like, and me sharing what I may or may not do. I may or may not finish this. Um, and you know what, sometimes the bravest thing and the hardest thing to do is to walk away from a project. So I'm gonna walk away from this for now um, and I may well come back to it at a future date or I may not. Um, it is literally the last of it I've got. It's such a lovely fabric though, so I, I hate to do that. And this one I'm gonna put down to um, just experience. Um, it's my fault. It, well, it's not my fault, is it? You buy a fabric hoping it's going to be a nice fabric and it turns out it was a nightmare. So, and it, but there's no point in creating something that isn't wearable. Um, that's I've always talked to you about that. Wearability is the most important thing about my um, wardrobe. Anyway, I've talked enough for a quick segment. A segment. Let's get back to the original content of the video. Take care. Okay, so you've seen my Rhapsody blouse. Um, experience. I, do you know, I absolutely love it. So the one I'm wearing in the footage, which is the only one that I completed, I wore it to work in the week and it's, I love it actually, it's really nice. I will say after a little while, the, uh, the lovely edge here, um, it does flop about a bit. In fact, it flops in on itself. Um, so I think Katrina from Lifting Pins and Needles has made a facing for that. Um, so that might be a way to go on that. But I do really like it. Um, here I am a week or so later and I haven't touched the, the leopard print one. Um, it's still in my sewing room. I'm not really a hoarder of unfinished things. So I'm probably going to say goodbye to that, I think, which is a shame because I absolutely love the style of it and the fabric. But I'm not sure. I'm still sitting on the fence. And when I look across to my right hand side here and I've got all these new projects on the go, um, it's it's easy to see why people have a whole collection of um, unfinished projects but I'm not that sort of person I'd rather say goodbye um, and then move on to the next thing but we'll see so I think when I also last saw you or spoke to you um, I was I've just picked up a frag fragment of what's left of this fabric because this is the lovely fabric I bought in France it's a great big paisley print if you're wondering what on earth I'm talking about please do pop back and, and look at my some of my previous videos um, and I wanted to make the caftan, uh, the lin caftan from Atelier Jupe. Now uh, you'll know that I have a little bit of an obsession with Atelier Jupe styling right now. I'd say Atelier Jupe and Friday Pattern Company are my favourite two um, sort of pattern companies at the moment. Just seem to suit my styling really well and our bang on trend, which is lovely. Um, and the, uh, do you know what, so I made, I did a little video, um, which I'll link in here somewhere, um, around my Telia Jupe collection so far. Um, I obviously tagged his Telia Jupe in, on my Instagram, um, which is Cara, uh, at, at Cara, so, 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 so mad on it, over on Instagram. Please follow me there if you haven't had a chance to, because I do share more pictures and things there. Um, and Atelier Jupe very kindly um, shared my photo, which is really sweet. Um, I'm just going to sip a tea. And they also said that I had a whole collection, which is really lovely. Mm. And it's, you know, it's all good advertising for them too, hopefully. So I, I reached out to Atelier Jupe and just said, you know, I'm crazy about the Lynn Caftan. I don't suppose there's any chance you'd share that with me in exchange for um, a blog or a, a blog or something. Um, and they responded incredibly quickly to say, yes, of course, we, we can see how passionate you are about our products. We'd be more than happy to share that with you. So how lovely was that? So thank you, Atelier Jube, for that. So I am now the proud owner of the Lynn Caftan as well. Um, and what I'm going to do is I made a Lynn Caftan. Now, I don't have a huge fabric stash. I do have fabric, but it is not huge. And when it comes to, do I cut into my lovely, um, you know, treasured um, fabric from France? Do I just go for it or do I um, see what I think about the pattern first? So I decided to do something a little bit different. I used a Primark scarf. Now, I didn't take a picture of the scarf around my neck, but I did hang it over my dining room chair and take a picture of you here. 
So I've had this scarf in my life, I'm gonna say for, I'm gonna say 12 years, I reckon. So it's a little bit bobbly, um, it's been well worn, but I don't wore, wear scarves as much as I used to. Um, now Primark is a, 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 you know, everyone in England knows exactly who Primark is. I don't know if it's international. It's basically, um, a, used to be a, a really bargain place to buy things. Um, in, in volume, some of the ethics are probably not great and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, this scarf was probably about three quid and I bought it probably about 12 years ago. I don't wear it anymore um, and I put it into my fabric stash. In fact, I, following the success of what I've done here, I've got a number of scarves, as, as maybe you have too. But they are a huge piece of fabric, aren't they, at the end of the day, and actually quite wide as well. So let me show you. I decided to make a linen caftan using a scarf. Um, let me just put it in the right way. Now I'm not going to put it on, but I am going to put some photos in here. The Lynn Caftan, let me show you the stocked photo of that. It's got this beautiful, um, simple neckline. Um, I'm not going to do it justice by holding this up because it's sheer, but it's a beautiful, simple styling, lovely bell sleeves. And I just wanted to make sure it was okay. Um, and this is the result. Now I appreciate you can't see this, so I'm going to put the footage in. Um, I'll happily put it on because I'm always doing mad things like that. Not going to go exactly with my um, polka dot, um, <laughs> not going to go with my polka dot outfit very well. But um, I actually wanted to create sort of a beach cover up if you like, but I've got it on with a simple white camisole underneath um, and I love it. I love the styling of it. Now this fabric wasn't particularly easy to work with, so it's not as crisp as it would be. Um, but I really love it. I love this neckline. See there, it's got this placket um, that you've got there. And it's got these lovely bell sleeves. I think you can see that okay. Um, so the sun's coming in and out, so I hope you can see that all right. Oh, I'm warm. I tell you what, I'm super warm today. Um, and I, I actually made this as wide as originally. I made it as wide as the scarf was. And believe it or not, that came down to my knees. So, um, but then I decided I didn't want it as a dress. I want it as a sort of a, a long line top. And I, I should, I'll tell you what, I cut it off too short, which is really annoying because I wanted it sort of mid thigh. But I hope you can see the shape of it there. And that was always trying, oh, that was all I was trying to get out of this. It's a wearable and understanding of the fabric. I'm going to take it back off again because it, I'm having a moment here. <laughs> But I love it, I absolutely love it. So you can make it as a top or you can make it as a dress and actually the dress, dress has the same casing on it as the Joy, oh, I call everything Joy. Same casing as the other dress <laughs> that I made recently. Helpful, it's also within the um, Atelier Jupe collection. Oh, I don't know, I keep, keep calling everything the same pattern, what a nightmare. But I love this, I'm super happy with it. Um, this fabric that I keep holding up, it's a bit like the silky fabric, silky, silky monkeys that I was testing about, wasn't it? This is a very structured cotton, so there's every chance that um, whatever I made uh, was going to be um, quite structured. I've got a crawling whippet here underneath me. Oh, I wish you could see how she's just crawled under the sofa. It's super hot and she's just crawled under this little sofa we've got in here. I wish you could see that. But anyway, so um, I do risk the caftan that I've made out of this quite structured, it's essentially a quilting cotton, could sort of be quite, you know, sticky outy. Um, but over time, I think that will soften up probably a little bit like linen, that sort of thing. So that is cut out, which is why I've only got a tiny scrap here, which is quite exciting. So that is underway. So there's me saying I've done no sewing. I've attempted to make three Rhapsody blouses um, and only have one successful one out of it. I have got a caftan cut out. Um, I've also got some quite exciting other plans as well. Because I do love the creativity. If I'm not even if I'm not physically sewing, then I'm thinking and I'm sort of you know making making plans, which is always really exciting. So 
I imagine, like you, um, or like me, you all have a fabric radar. Now what I mean by that is you could be in a place you've never been to before, or be aware that there might have been some element of fabric um, in a shop somewhere. And so your sort of your fabric senses come alive when you're around fabric. And this happened to me last weekend. I'm driving through the tiniest little village called Horham. It's only just down the road from me. And when I moved here um, just over a year ago, there had been a fabric shop in Horham for the last 15 years. Okay, now it's mostly upholstery fabric, so don't get too excited, um, which is always really disappointing, I think, when you have a fabric shop and it's all upholstery. I'm like, really, seriously, what? Um, sorry for the upholstery lovers. But um, they did sell some dress fabric and dress making fabrics and I bought a beautiful jersey from them a couple of years ago. Anyway, driving through the village, massive signs across the front of the shop, flash sale, I'm like Arrgh! swerved into a car park, all legally and all safely can I just say. And uh, <laughs> I um I went back to the shop. Uh, obviously it's still full of upholstery fabric, but massive signs saying 50% off. I'm thinking, ah oh, I can't not and, oh, Alice has just sat down right next to my tripod, so that's going to be interesting. She's now in a slither of sunshine. But, um, so I, yes, I thought, oh, let's go and have a look, let's go and see. So I went in there, and it is an eclectic mix of all sorts of different things, um, but I couldn't resist. I mean, come on, 50% off, what are you going to do? What's a fabric lover going to do? So let me show you. Um, now, the first piece of fabric I have hacked to pieces. Um, just going to take another sip of tea. Hang on a sec. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sorry about that. So I have hacked this. Um, so it's a very um, isn't it funny how a fabric just looks so unglamorous when you we cut into it. So I hope you can see that it's black. It's got it's a black with these beautiful embroidered flowers all over it. Okay, and on the other side, it is um, it's, it's not reversible, but you can see that's sort of like a a beautiful um, deep red. Um, it's just the underside. It frays like mad because inside is hundreds of pieces of um, thread which is what creates this beautiful embroidery. Now this is, it's a really interesting fabric because it's sort of quilted. Um, it's really thick. Um, it's, it's, not an, it's not an uncomfortable feel. It's quite soft. So it's semi-quilted. I'm not really sure how it's done it other than the volume of threads in it. It's it's really beautiful. My scrap here really isn't doing it justice. And it was half price, so it was eight pounds a metre, um, which I just couldn't resist, really. I just I just really liked it. Um, and I, can't, I think I've spoken about this pattern a number of times. Um, a very dear um, sewing friend that I've never actually met, but would absolutely love to. We were planning to meet, but sadly, um, we were unable to meet at short notice. Um, Jane from the Sussex Seamstress has just released a little while back now because she's producing patterns at a lovely rate of knots. Such a talented woman. Used to sew for um, the Royal Opera House and all sorts of things. Incredible. But um, she released something called a, a pattern called the Mayfield Jacket. Now I'm sorry if I've talked about this endlessly. It's a lovely asymmetric um, pattern. The two front pieces. It's just intended to sort of just sit um, and not really have a closure or anything and I, I just really love the styling of it um, and so I was waiting to find a fabric um, that was quilted. Now in actual fact what I wanted to do was buy one of the those beautiful Indian quilts you get that are already quilted and then you can just buy a spine the ed edges. <coughs> but um, with, <laughs> I'll be honest, I just I don't have the ex spare change to buy a beautiful quilted um, throw at the moment even though they're not hugely expensive I just I just somehow in my brain need to justify the purchases I make so I bought a meter and a half of that which would be in a fraction of the cost of a throw so um, I also really wanted to make the jackets even though I don't need another jacket I've got the dry jackets that are also designed by Sussex Seamstress um, but you know what can you do so I have cut out a jacket um, uh, and uh, have, I'm in the process of constructing that, which is very exciting. So by the time this film comes out to you, I may well have released some footage over on Instagram, so don't forget to follow me over there if you haven't had a chance to. Also in that fabric shop, 
I can see how much that is molted like mad. Um, I don't want to drop any of it on the floor. Was this lush? I'm going to come right in. Absolutely lush, beautiful teal. This is super soft. Um, absolutely lovely. Really soft, and I've got two meters of this, I think. So I shall just stash this now <clears throat> until later in the year. I definitely don't need to make anything out of this right now. But this was only six pounds a meter, I think. And it's so soft, it's like a big blanket, really, um, which you could just easily keep it as a blanket. But at some stage, I'll do something with that, something snuggly and warm for winter um, <clears throat> in autumn. And then last, the last find, which is actually the first thing I saw, was linen. Um, now, you're never going to walk past linen for half price, are you, and not buy it. Now, I can't say that this is a colour um, that I would ordinarily buy. It's really salmon. Um, it is coming up pretty much true to form, really, uh, a little bit further back like that. This is not really a colour that I think suits me. I think it washes me out a little bit, but it is a colour I really like. And also, it goes really beautifully um, with this, which I didn't didn't even think about at the time. Now, it was funny, actually, because on the morning of this sale, I was busy making the caftan, and when I saw this fabric, um, I, I thought, oh, do you know what? This would make a superb caftan. But I've, I've since decided that this colour next to my face, not so good, but this colour as a pair of trousers would be awesome. Um, and also then potentially caftan on the top would be amazing. Although what I've decided to make, um, and I promise, although Jane has been very kind and provided me with the Mayfield jacket, she also has provided me with the Cheney trousers, which is what I've decided to make this out of. Um, so let me pop a lovely spitfire just gone over. I'll pop a picture of the Cheney trousers in here. Now I confess, Jane gave me this pattern some time ago. I can't even remember when, so I'm really sorry Jane that it's taken me so long to, um, to find the right fabric and moment to feature them. Um, but they're a beautiful wide leg um, sort of collotte, or, or you know, wide leg style trousers. Um, and what I really like about them is they're flat front uh, with two subtle pleats and then an elasticated back, which I think is going to be super comfy. And I actually asked Jane and just said, is linen all right? Because you know how some trousers actually are better to have a bit more drape than linen has? And she came back and said, that's fine. Um, and if you, if you didn't know already, all of Jane's patterns come with a free, or uh, you can access, sorry, all of Jane's sew-alongs for her patterns over on her YouTube channel, which is Sussex um, Seamstress. So all of her patterns, got a wonderful sew along and they're that good that I never follow the instructions. I literally am listening to Jane and watching Jane make the item, which is what I'm going to be doing with this wonderful fabric. So I'm really looking forward to that because I've also cut this out as well. So not much, I say not much, there has been some sewing there, hasn't there? Yes, yes there has. And there's been some preparation, which for me is different to the sewing bit. So I'm really excited about those few bits. Um, also still on my stash of pile of things to make is the grey Aina, 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 A-I-N-A, A-I-N-A, trousers from Fried, from, from True Bias. <laughs> God, I'm like falling, I'm missing, falling apart. See the True Bias or name? goodness I can't remember I'll put it up here but anyway there's a pair of trousers and um, still there to go and I don't know why they keep going to the bottom of the pile I think it's probably because fabrics like this are just so inspiring but I do need the grey trousers in my life in my work life really and so I will get round to those at some stage so I hope you've enjoyed um, seeing hearing the ramblings of my brain sorry if I was a bit over all over the place there just me, it's just how I am, um, and I hope just my enthusiasm comes across um, while I'm talking about these lovely things. I'd love to hear what you're up to, so don't be shy, do leave me a comment, I respond to all of the messages, and I just adore hearing from you all. Um, let me know what you're sewing. Um, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please do, and can I also say many thanks to those that have um, have supported me in my Kofi account, um, but also in the in the new thanks button. So just beneath where the description is of my video, there's a heart um, with a little pound sign in it, 
and that is a new fe feature called the super thanks button so you can um, support my channel uh, um, you know, there's no minimum amount, um, so every every penny counts, as they say. So please, if you love what I do, I would greatly appreciate it if you could support my channel either through my Kofi account or my or the Super Thanks function. Um, uh, everything is going up in the world, as they say, um, and, and any contributions to my channel are heartily received, um, and I, I really love it. It just helps me helps my guilt but I suppose but it also helps me in the generation of content and hopefully that brings joy to your life too um, uh, just by being part of our lives together which is lovely so enough rambling from me um, stay safe and well everybody and I think next time I'm going to be oh, I'm not sure what's coming up next but there's more content to come so I, I look forward to seeing you then take care everybody bye bye